Hello, so it's the end of 2019 and I just wanted to make a summary video. So in 2019 I got involved in activism and the first protest I went to it was against current animal transportation laws in Canada. So currently you can transport cows up to two days without food and water and for pigs it's 36 hours and for chickens it's 28 hours and at the same time it's very cold here, right? And so what happens sometimes they get um, their legs, for example, get frozen to the truck from inside and then they pull them out and the legs stay there and stuff like that. So it was a very sad situation and I'm pretty sure everyone there was just wishing that we were actually protesting against just not killing them <laughs> at all because usually the transportation means they are being sent to slaughterhouse but I mean yes and actually now I did a research before recording this video and they are changing the laws and next year 2020 it will be less amount of hours that you are allowed to transport them without rest. And I attended other protests as well but I never talked to anyone so this um, transportation protest was more towards government but uh, other protests were targeted towards general public so and my fellow activists would talk to people they're very good in that but uh, for me uh, I'm not ready yet to really talk to people and even to give flyers I just can't do it so all I can do is just make a sign and just hold it <laughs> for now so in 2019 I also made lots of vegan friends most of them are uh, activists and so in summer it was for the first time when there was um, a potluck party in a park and only vegan people were there <laughs> and so the thing is I mean I'm very lucky and very grateful like incredibly grateful for my family and my friends and my co-workers because they don't make me feel uncomfortable about it and they they're always considerate about me but it's still um, because the fact is you are like different and when you are well so what, what I mean it's about food right so if you are eating together with people who are not vegans it's it's always like puts you to be a bit outsider <laughs> and so it was the first time in this summer that I was on a party and everyone was vegan and it was just such an incredible feeling because I had not felt uh, to be in a majority for I don't know like for a very long time because before vegan I was vegetarian so uh, I still had this slightly um, outsider feeling whenever I would go but uh, especially after turning into veganism and so there was this moment when so this party was happening in a park and I cycled there so I was I already said goodbye to everyone and then I just was going away with my bicycle like very slowly and so they were joking around between each other and they started shouting go vegan or go home <laughs> I just found it was very funny and I also shouted so I was already about like 20 meters away but I still shouted and uh, like there, there were some, some people sitting in the park and they just looked at me and instead of feeling embarrassed I just felt like yeah <laughs> you know like because um, I was part of the group and my feelings and my I don't know, like my stuff got validated after hanging out with the other vegans and it was like, um, yeah, go vegan or go home. So the downside of this is that, so my feelings about what happening to animals got validated and now like I'm a part of the group and I'm not alone, right? So I, I could not really suppress it as much as before and also, well, for example, I I don't want to go to bear witness animals being sent to slaughterhouse because my friends do that so they go and they just um, give water and some comfort to animals just before they are sent to be slaughtered but I can't do it but I still watch the videos 
that they make there. And some other stuff, like my newsfeed is lots of animal cruelty stuff, so I realized, I, I mean, I knew how bad it was, but then I realized that it's much worse, and I became very sensitive, so, so right now, for example, I can't sit at the table if there is a dead animal there, because I can't ignore it, all I can see is there uh, their suffering, the fear, the pain, the torture that they went through and I can't ignore this fact and just be social and be friendly. It's very hard for me and at the same time, so there was one point when even talking, like when people talk about it and it's not just meat, it's also dairy products. So once my co-workers were just discussing a milkshake so they found this delicious milkshake and when they started talking about it, it just triggered in me all this uh, visual and this graphic stuff and eyes of the cows being in the farm and just being tortured and then slaughtered and all this stuff. So it really triggered me and I just had to leave the room and then I realized that it's, it's, it's really affecting me. So. Throughout the year, sometimes I just, for a few weeks, I just don't go on Facebook, for example, and um, I never watch any vegan channels or anything like that, because I just can't, I, I just can't uh, to face more <laughs> truth. <laughs> so few channels I can watch, one of them is Vegan Gains. Sometimes I watch his videos when he just um, catches other people's uh, BS, basically. And because I think he represents my suppressed anger. Another channel I watch sometimes is from Erzling Ed, but the problem is that he usually interviews intelligent people and that's the most thing that disturbs me because there are some kind of people that don't really think about uh, this stuff much and it's kind of understandable, but when people actually know what's happening and they just make this conscious decision to ignore it, it's just really disturb, disturbs me and uh, at the same time if I like someone and if I respect someone and uh, I mean there are lots of people I do, right? <laughs> and it's just very frustrating always and it's just, I, I made a video in 2018, what kills vegans and it's just this cognitive dissonance um, and it, it's still true and Mostly it's about a third type of uh, person that's in that video who is like very knowledgeable and knows about the whole the thing and um, still ignores it and I, I just like that doesn't make any sense because and especially when he so everything had interviewed people at climate strike and so because this climate strike movement I just thought it means that it will improve for animal agriculture as well because uh, currently the way we farm animals it's not good for environment so at least it needs to be reduced if not eliminated at all right so I, I thought people would say yes at least let's uh, reduce it at least but so he interviewed these people and they were like oh yeah 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 no 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 like uh, I still I still enjoy my steak I mean I know but yeah it's just a big corporate or I, I don't know but it was very frustrating and it was actually a reason why I didn't go to local climate strike because I thought you know what if you if you don't want to at least reduce eating animals, consuming animals, and you still want to be saved, and your planet, you want your planet to be saved. You know what? No. <laughs> Let's just kill this planet. Let's just destroy everything, because you know what? If there will be 50 degrees outside, you can't really farm animals in 50 degrees, so you want it or not, farming will be reduced, and then humanity will die, everyone will die, everything will die, and then maybe Earth will regenerate, and at least like animal suffering will be over. So I know it's... Yeah, anyway, so that's how I felt, and um, so I did not go. So now about film stuff. In 2019 I was working on a script, and so it's about Asian witch, who is vegan, and who wants to save all animals on Earth. 
and so she casts a spell to do it but something goes wrong and then the like, whole film is consequences and dealing with that. And so it's 26 pages and I, I didn't know how hard it is to make 26 pages but then I did some budgeting and some planning and I was like oh yeah it's actually almost like a feature uh, film because even if you make like few pages it's very hard to uh, film that but like for 26 and then I actually decided to rewrite it because I realized that I don't like the way it is and so yeah, that's well, still work in progress. Um, hopefully I will do some progress in 2020 and maybe it will make it, but honestly, it's a huge project. It's just huge. And um, at, at, the, uh, at this moment, I'm not sure if I'm, um, I mean, if I get funding, yes, but uh, on my own, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I can do it. So another project I'm working right now, it's just six pages and it's more realistic to make even with my own funds. So it's about a crossroads demon who slowly disappears because he's not consuming souls, he needs to stay alive. And so he tricks the system because nobody summons him and he gets summoned to a vegan potluck party and then stuff happens so that's a film and I'm really excited about it so in 2019 I actually made two films that carry vegan message so one of them I made for 48 hour film festival and actually my vegan friends and activists helped me to do it and I'm incredibly grateful for that we also had other like not yet vegans on the crew who are my friends or um, local actors and it was just amazing experience. So the plot is that there is this um, mom's meetup, so moms meet <laughs> and sit in the room and they share their experiences about motherhood, for example breastfed feeding or how they found the part, like uh, all kinds of stuff. And so one of the moms is actually a cow. So it's played by a human, and I, I mean, she was incredible, but uh, so it's played by a human, but it's meant to be a cow. And so every time um, they ask a question, she shares what's really happening in dairy industry. So, and this film kind of makes a parallel how it's happening for dairy cows because it's really terrible stuff and so when she shares her experiences everyone is like shocked. <sighs> so this film was watched by about 200 people because it was screened in local theater and in one month it will be screened again but in a small small environment but uh, still uh, I mean um, some people will watch it and I still need to redo it because 48 hour film festival means that we made this film in 48 hours so planning shooting editing everything was done uh, in 48 hours within 48 hours and um, it needs some fixing, of course it's not perfect and I was rushing, also I had some requirements uh, to follow so maybe if I didn't have these requirements I would edit it differently so I just need to work on, the, uh, work on this but uh, honestly I would rather work on something new because that's more exciting but I understand that I need to push myself and go back and just re-edit and finish that project. And another film I made with the help of my dear friends and I'm so grateful that they helped me out. So it was another festival and this time it was One Take Super 8. So it's an old camera and you have this film that's about 2 minutes and 30 seconds long and you just shoot whatever you want and you don't edit uh, at all. You just submit the film and then you watch it uh, at the festival so you don't know it might be overexposed and it's just white or underexposed and it's just black so it's kind of um, yeah it was uh, you, uh, yeah <laughs> so in this film the main character is very kind and nice person very environmentally friendly and then she sits down to eat a beef burger and so I had two pairs of clothes and so once she eats like normally and then we change clothes and put some blood, fake blood and uh, it's like she's eating like um, 
like animal eats raw meat, you know, and then you switch back and she eats normally and then you switch back and it's more blood and she's ah, and <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. And then um, there is an image of a cow being uh, stunned in a head because that's how uh, one of the methods, how they kill cows in a slaughterhouse. And then it's about milk. So she drinks milk with the cookies and she's like, oh, it's so uh, like enjoys and then it's blood again. <laughs> So, and then there is a footage of, um, so calves are being taken away from mother cow and the mother cow is running um, to get the cows. And then she writes down, like she smiles, she's so happy about herself. And then she, she writes down like, be kind, live, love, laugh. <laughs> and yeah, so that was the film and about uh, 30 people watched it. And I have a digital copy of that film. I already adjusted exposure because I mean, it was still visible, but it was overexposed for the outside scenes because you don't have any viewfinder or anything for that camera and um, we just had the automatic exposure and it just did not work out um, uh, very well, but it still worked. It's not like the, um, it's not like it's blank white, but yeah, anyway, so I still need to add some sound effects or music to it and then maybe I'll submit it to some festivals or just put it online. So as for Winnipeg, the city where I live in, so this year we had first animal rights march and I was shocked so many people attended it, I didn't expect it, it was about 200 people because usually on protests it's it's always same 10 people who come and yeah, animal rights march, it was huge and we just had, we, we just marched basically and we were chanting some stuff and that was amazing. And it was funny because uh, the, the day before I went to dollar store to get some to get some sheets for my sign and there was a woman with her granddaughter and she was also getting the sheets and the child is asking, oh, is she going to animal rights march tomorrow as well? And I turned around and I was like, I actually indeed do. <laughs> and yeah, that was that was cool. As for the food, I think I was actually eating healthier in 2018 than in 2019 because yeah, there are more options and I, I just kind of forgot all of this Dr. Gregor and like this kind of healthy stuff and when I can I still try to do whole food plant-based, oil-free, salt-free stuff but um, also I just found uh, this year I just discovered the farmer's market and local bakers who bake amazing stuff and I just can't stop buying that and eating and yeah, so let's see what happens in 2020. Thank you for watching and if you also want to share your story, um, I will be really interested to watch it or read it or listen to it. So just let me know. Okay, thank you. Bye.